Hello and welcome to Knickrit. My name is Cody Lee and in today's video we're doing a bit of a redo. So uh, a while ago, really like when I first started my channel, I did a little cute mini octopus video way back in the day. It was like five years ago and I got copyright striked on it because I used some of that copyright free music that you see all the time on YouTube. It was a random channel and honestly I kept on getting like waves of getting hit with uh, copyright for it. So I just said, you know what, it's not even that loud in the background, I'm just going to make it so that I have the YouTube uh, library audio only in the background, which is why it's not as fun anymore. But I don't get copyright strikes anymore. Anyway, so basically my original video has like an entire, like seven minutes of it, just, just no audio in the middle of it. Yeah, I have like the pattern on there, but I've decided that I get enough complaints about this in my comments section that I would just redo it. And I think it would be really super duper cute. I've also seen a bunch of different little like squids that have the cute little mouth. So I decided to redo it and do a, a couple different versions. I decided to do the entire rainbow when I redid this apparently. I just kept on doing them and I didn't realize how many I'd made before it was too late. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and get started. There will be a printable PDF for this that is free for the first week. So go ahead and get that coupon code down below. It's on our Ravelry and linked in the description down below. We also have a Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel that kind of way. If you want to do anything like that, we have a Patreon, we have an Instagram, we have TikTok. I'm terrible at TikTok, but I have one. It exists. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, for this project, you will need some worsted weight yarn. I'm going to be making a pistachio one because I feel like this is a really nice light tone so you can actually see my stitches. But honestly, I'm just using I Love This Cotton, which is a Hobby Lobby specific brand. I really like this for a macaroni. Cotton doesn't stretch as much so you don't see the stuffing quite as much. Um, I pair that with a crochet hook and whatever honestly you feel like you're most comfortable with. I'm going to be using a 3.25 millimeter. This is my Furls crochet hook, the Odyssey line. I love this. It's so beautiful, but it's a 3.25, but whatever gauge you want to make it is fine. If you want to use plush yarn and a slight larger hook, you can do that too. Usually with like plush yarn, I'd use like, let me grab this over here, like an eye or something smaller than what the yarn calls for. Uh, same thing with any kind of amigurumi, I always go smaller than what the yarn calls for, like two to three sizes depending on what it is. But as long as your holes aren't showing, honestly, you'll be fine and you'll get a nice little amigurumi. I also have these really cute little eyes off Amazon. They're so adorable. And I'm gonna have an Amazon affiliate link for that down below. And it's not any extra for you. It just gives me a little kickback if you wanna buy those on Amazon. If you find them on Etsy, you're free to get them on there too, whatever eyes you want to use. But look at how cute they are. And it comes in this little tiny case. I love this. I actually just bought four more because I like all the different sizes and I'm gonna have those as well. And uh, some polyfill is what you are going to also need for the inside of this. You don't need a lot and also a darning needle. I You can also just glue on buttons if you wanna do that, whatever you wanna do, do felt eyes. However you wanna go about it, whatever you wanna do works out for you. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is a fairly easy, simple beginner's project, but you are going to want to be comfortable with a couple of things. The big thing that I always say is you're going to want to be working in the round and be comfortable with working in the round. Single crocheting. In this video, I am going to be doing a row where I stagger versus stacking my stitches. And if you are confused by any of these terms, you can pop over to my Amigurumi 101 playlist and you can find all these things with me going significantly slower over there. I'm also going to be using a seamless fasten off when it comes to the little snout, a little nose here, and that's pretty much it. I do my magical ring a little bit differently than most people. If you're familiar with this channel, then you'll know how I do this, but I'm going to show you uh, how I do mine. But basically, I'm going to grab my yarn, I'm going to make a slip stitch, and then I'm going to put it on my hook. I'm going to chain two. I yarn under versus yarn over, either will work. I get questions in my comments about that a lot. I find that yarning under looks better for my amigurumi. It's called an X stitch versus a Y stitch. I do do this on purpose. I find that the X stitch also hides your stuffing a little bit better. So that's a little fun fact right there. I also have a video on how to do the X stitch versus the Y stitch. It's essentially just wrapping under instead of wrapping over. So wrapping under, 
I'm going to take my crochet hook and go and skip the second chain that I just made and go back into the first. So I'm going to wrap in here, wrap, and then pull up and do my first single crochet. And for here, this is acting as our magic ring. So I'm going to put my original for round one. We're going to make six single crochet inside. So two, go back inside three and it might widen up. That's okay. This tail will essentially be able to cinch it. So it's not a problem. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I also apologize if you can hear cars in the background because it is snowing out and there's a ton of plow trucks out right now. So take your tail. You'll see that there's a giant hole in the center right here. That's okay. Take your tail and kind of just tug it while pinching your work. Don't pull so tight that you're going to rip your yarn, but that's what I do essentially. Move that out of the way because Henrietta is not doing her job over here. Henrietta is the name of my yarn bowl because she's a chicken. So what I do here for round two is a little bit different. With the way that I make my original magic ring, I'd like to make sure that this tail isn't going to go anywhere. So I like to work this tail through the second row's stitches, which just means that I take my crochet hook, I work through front loop only, and uh, that is important for this pattern. So unless I specify otherwise, you're going to work through just the first loop, not both like so so this is the first loop if you're going to go through both it goes like this so don't go like that just go through the front loop only and we're going to put our tail up in the middle of that so that it's overlaying that little front loop there and i'm going to put two single crochet or increase every single stitch we're going to be going from six up to twelve so one, two, go back inside, two, keeping our tail in the center the entire time. That just makes it so that it is nice and snug in there. Every once in a while, I like to, one, two, I like to take my tail and kind of tug it, not so tight that it warps your yarn, because if you tug it too tight, it can make it so that you've got like a weird little cone situation going on on the top of the head. I do not want to work with that yarn right there. There we go. I want to work that in the middle, not with it. I've always, I hate it when you pick up your tail and you start working with it and you don't mean to. Uh, but basically, if you just kind of keep it snug a little bit, it makes it so that it doesn't show up in the middle of your stitches. Tug it a little bit and you'll be fine. This is the fifth increase. I will count at the end of this row. And so this is the last increase right here. One, and then go back inside the same stitch. Two, drop your tail and now I'm going to be working my uh, work without that tail and this is just going to be used as a stitch marker for me. I prefer using my tail as a stitch marker, it helps me keep track of things and then I don't have to keep track of a stitch marker on top of that, I just use my tail. So now we're on round three and for round three we're going to do increasing again. Every single round until we get to 30 stitches we're going to be increasing six stitches each round. So that makes a space between your increases every single time you go outward. Um, so we're going to single crochet one and then increase. And again, we're still just going through front loop only one. And then this stitch, we're going to do two, one, two, one, until you get back to your tail, two, one, two, and then we have one more repetition after this as I drop my stitch. For good luck, you got it sometimes. One, and then two. So I'm gonna double check and make sure that I am at 18 stitches. We had six, we increased six, that made it 12, then we increased another six that makes 12 plus six to 18. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now, beautiful, that is exactly what I want. I'm gonna pull that out a little bit and then take my hook and pull it through the final stitch and make it so that my tail is on the front. 
That way I know where my work is. So here is where I do something called staggering my increases. Um, staggering, I have an entire video on stacking versus staggering your stitches. But if you just did single crochet two and then increase, um, you're stacking your stitches. Basically, you're adding that extra stitch between your increases. And the issue with stacking it is basically you end up with all of your uh, increases all aligned with one another which gives you kind of a hexagonal look and in order to avoid that and also minimize the holes whenever you increase you create a slightly larger hole which can show your stuffing a little bit more I do something called staggering which instead of single crochet two and increase for this round essentially you're going to single crochet one increase and then single crochet one Let's do that one more time. Single crochet one, increase, single crochet one. So that still gives you two stitches between your increases, but it doesn't line up with your increase from the previous round. And that makes it slightly less visible. It's a small technique and you don't have to do this if you don't want to. If you just want to single crochet two and increase for this round, you're free to. But I like to do my staggering on that. So again, single crochet one, e, increase, single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, and this is our final one, so single crochet one, increase, and single crochet one. We went from 18 stitches up to 24 because we increased six times. And now we're gonna take our tail, pull that forward, and now we're on our final increase round. This is one, two, three, four. We are now on our fifth round. And so now we're not gonna stagger because we have an uneven number of stitches between our increases. We're just going to single crochet one, two, three and increase all the way around six times so one two three increase one two three increase one, two, three, increase, one, two, three, increase, And one, two, three, increase. Pull our tail through and adjust our marker. And so now we're at a fairly easy part. I'm gonna fast forward through this part, but for what we're going to do next is we just increased to 30 stitches and we're going to maintain those 30 stitches for six rounds. We're just gonna single crochet around all of these, not doing an increase, not doing a decrease for six rounds. We'll be right back as soon as that's done and I'll show you how I do a round where I decrease to kind of taper this off into its little centers, and then I'll show you how I add the eyes after that. Be right back as soon as I've gone around for six rounds to give this its body uh, height, basically. Be right back. All right, so now we are on row 12, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick decrease round in order to get us to have this nice kind of cupped shape on the end here. You don't have to do this, but honestly, I think it looks really cute, so that's why I'm doing it. I'm doing a little decrease round. So we're going to be doing the inverse of what we did on our last increase round. So instead of single crochet three increase, we are going to single crochet three and then decrease two together. And I'm going to show you how I do my invisible decrease. 
So we're going to single, actually I'm gonna take my tail and bring it forward because now I don't need it there anymore and it'll give a bit more uh, visual for where our start and end is. And now we're going to single crochet one, two, three, and then take these two stitches, put your hook through the front, the front loop only on those and go through both of them at the same time and then single crochet through both of them as if they are one stitch. That is how I decrease. So again, one, two, oh, come on, I split it. Get back in there. Two, three, go through both front loops, decrease, one, two, three, decrease these two together, one, two, three, decrease two together, one, two, three, put these two together, and then one more decrease after this is one, two, three, and decrease, that is our final one, two together. So here's what I like to do. What I like to do from here is I like to add the eyes on before I do my little tentacle scallop bottom feeties. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna center my back with my front like that. And then I'm going to count up four rounds. So we run around six, but I'm gonna go up four rounds. One, two, three, four. And we're gonna go right here and kind of wiggle it in. Try not to do what I just did, which is split my yarn. Try to actually wiggle it in like that. And I like my eyes to have the light going towards the right, like this way. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make it so that it's about four or so stitches apart. Making sure that it's lined up with the other round. I think right there will probably be good. Wiggle, wiggle. I'm not going to add my backs on until I have them how I want them. That looks right around right. So now I'm going to take my backs and snap them on. With these ones, they're actually fairly easy to snap on. Though it is hard to pick them up off of a flat surface, I will say that. There we go, off the edge of my desk there. Then we're gonna do that, and snap, just like that. And now you have your eyes on, and we're gonna make the cute little feet, tentacle, legs, however you wanna call it. I'm gonna call them tentacles probably. The tentacle scallops is probably what I'm going to put on my pattern. And uh, we're going to now work on that next. All right, so we're going to put our crochet hook on, and now we're going to work on our little scallop tentacles. And what we do to make our scallop tentacles is we have our decrease right here, and we're going to go into the next round, and we're going to put six double crochet inside of that one stitch. So we're not going to go six across we're going to literally put six single crochet clustered and overwhelm this stitch so again i'm yarning under instead of over but i'm going to go over over wrap go back inside that same stitch wrap two same stitch three and there is going to be a slight little hole it's going to be a little wider than it usually would be four Five, same hole, and six, same hole. I know it's ridiculous, but it, it makes it look kind of more rounded and poppy. So then after that, we're going to go into the next stitch after that and slip stitch, and then skip the stitch after your slip stitch. So skip and then repeat. We're going to go inside our stitch after that. So not this one, we just skip this one and go into the next one. 
and do six single crochet again. We're gonna repeat this process where we go one, two, three, four, five. And if you're happier with it looking less rounded, you are free to put less of them in here. I just like how it looks. And then six, and then slip stitch and skip. And you're gonna do that all the way around until you have six scallops. I'm gonna go do that for the rest of these and come back when I'm on my final scallop. That way I can show you how I slip stitch uh, off-ish kind of and how I actually do the little belly because this is all done in one piece and I go through these little back ridges in order to uh, close up our bottoms. So I'll be right back as soon as I get to the last scallop on this. All right, we're on the final scallop. I'm skipping this last little one here, going into this. And then I'm gonna do my, again, six double crochet, two, three, four, five, and six, and six, there we go, and so now what we're going to do is I like to do something to kind of get myself a little bit lower, so instead of going slip stitch, like right here, I kind of go underneath it and do kind of like a side post <laughs> crochet and just slip stitch right there. It kind of brings it all together. And then I'm gonna do a chain one. And then I'm gonna take this tail and kind of let it go inside. Oops, inside. There we are. Kind of let it sit on the inside there. And you'll notice that there's a ton of these little back post ridges, these little lines right here. And you'll notice that where you just finished off, it's not even. And what I like to do when I'm working through both of these is I like to kind of marry them together. So I go through the first back loop here, and then I go to the one right underneath it as well, like so. Put my hook through both of these. That way it kind of joins it, it makes it actually round, and that makes it so that it's even. Oh wait. Where did my hook go? I need to do that again and make sure the yarn's behind because that's where it looks better. So there, make sure your yarn's behind, then wrap and single crochet. So here we have 24 stitches, 24 of these back loops, and we're going to single crochet three and then decrease. So the way that I kind of do it though instead of doing an actual decrease, is I skip a stitch. So essentially what we're gonna do is that's our first single crochet, one, two, three, and then four. And then four, and then skip your fifth stitch. That essentially kind of single crochets those two together, but instead I'm just going over it. So skipping, and then going into this one, one, two, three, four. Our goal is to end up with 24 stitches on our work. So one, two, three, four. And you'll notice I'm kind of curling this up so that I can see it. Skip, one, two, three, four, skip, one, two, three, four, skip, one, two, three, ah. and we're right towards our beginning again, four, e. 
try not to split your yarn like me four and you'll notice that there's one stitch right there we're going to skip that and this is our first single crochet that we made i'm going to pull this a little bit more tightly than i did before and go inside and do a quick little single crochet this is the first stitch of our next round and our next round and what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet one decrease single crochet one single crochet one decrease single crochet one again we are going to be doing the inverse when we decrease than what we did when we were increasing earlier our goal for this round is to go from 24 stitches down to 18. i hope that makes sense so that's our first single crochet one right there go into these two like we did for our decreases before put those two together and single crochet and then one and again one decrease don't split your yarn there we go decrease single crochet one single crochet one decrease single crochet one decrease these two together single crochet one one decrease one and then we have one more so one decrease one now we should have 18 stitches left on our work but the hole's going a little bit too small in order to stuff too too much more so i'm going to stop decreasing and i'm going to grab my giant bag of felt and actually stuff it a little bit i'm gonna do that with that I like to kind of start when i'm stuffing to go around in between the eyes it helps it from having these little uh, safety backings the little pointy ends on this side if you don't stuff in between them first it can make it so that the eyes just do like weird wonky things on the side i don't know i just try to get it pressed towards the middle first and then i add more stuffing as i go i'm gonna go off camera real quick fast forward a little bit while i stuff this real quick <laughs> I also find that kind of making a hole in the center and like rounding it out to the sides tends to make a plushier looking little dude. So that is also what I'm doing. All right, so this is mostly stuffed, but now we're going to do one more round of decreasing. And here we have 18 stitches. So what we're going to want to do is single crochet one and then decrease trying to minimize down to 12 from 18. It's hard to show it when you're getting down to this side of it. One, two, one, one, two, one, And trying not to get the stuffing into it like that. I don't like that. So, one. There we are. Two. One. Two. Then this is our last decrease for this round. One, two. I'm gonna try to get a little more stuffing done just on the edge here to make it a little bit more rounded. It's a little more wonky unless I add more to the center there. I'm gonna ball it a little bit and try to get it so that it's like underneath like that. I'm gonna do a little bit more right there because it needs it. And also still trying to get it underneath the lip of the stitches right there. Just kind of round it. Make it look like that. I'm going to add a little bit more right on that edge too. And then that's pretty much it for the stuffing, I think. Yeah, I'm happy with that. We have one more round where we're going to decrease 
every single stitch and I'm going to show you how I finish off as well. So we are going to grab this and now we're going to just decrease very quickly every single one. So decrease one and on the last decrease I do a little bit differently so I would pay attention just a little bit. So one, two, decrease, three, four, we want six decreases, but we're going to do it differently on the sixth one, five, oops, I'm trying not to get the stuffing in as I go, because that is a pain in the neck. Five. So we should have seven stitches left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to skip this one and just slip stitch off on the final. That still decreases us down to six, but I find that it looks a bit better. We're going to cut a little bit of a tail and pull that through. And we still have this big hole in the center of it. So what do we do? I find that a nice seamless fastening off method is so we're going to take our nice long yarn here and I'm going to take this and go from the outside towards the center up the front loop and go towards the center. One, go towards the center of the next stitch. I'm going counterclockwise? No, I'm going clockwise. I'm going clockwise across all these stitches, just going from the center and in. I have a video where I slowly do this if you would like me to go a little bit more slowly, again on the Amigurumi 101 playlist. This is the last one, up the top. Then I take my needle, I'm still in the top of that stitch, but instead of going off and trying to just pull it through, I'm going to go through the center and out the side, like so, pull it. And then as soon as you pull this tail, it all closes up. You can kind of wonky it free and you've got a fairly fastened off seamless bottom. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this and actually go up again, closer to the top. The further away it is from your base here, the better off you are because if it comes unraveled for whatever reason in the future, you can then have more uh, tail to work with basically to try to get back in. I'm going to do that. I weaseled it all the way through the top of the head. And if you are not wanting to make one with a mouth, you're done here. But I like the ones with the mouths a lot. I've seen them all over Pinterest with little cute mouths. There's a bunch of different versions of this. And I just wanted to do my own version. I thought it was super cute. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our yarn and do a quick little mouth for this little guy. And so here, what I'm going to do is again, leave a nice long tail. This is my first tail right here. I'm gonna again, make a nice little slip knot like I did at the beginning of this. Nice long tail, I'm going to use that for sewing later. And I'm gonna put that on my hook. We're gonna make our magic ring just like we did earlier, where we chain one and two, skip our second chain, go inside the first one, and then put six single crochet on the inside of that. So one, two, three, four, five, and it's okay that it's getting all open again, and six. Pull that tail. We are not slip stitching off. I'm going to show you how I use my seamless fasten off to make a nice seamless round mouth. We're going to cut our tails to approximately, doesn't really need to be super exact, same length, get this yarn out of the way, pull this through, make sure you're keeping track. This is the original tail, this is the one we just pulled through. I'm holding that actively in my hand right now. We're going to take our darning needle and we're going to create a fake seamless fasten off. It's fastening it off, but it's, it's a fake seam. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, keep our tail kind of down over here, and take our darning needle and go through the front of the stitch towards the back, just like so. Pull that through, and again, I have a fake seamless fasten off where I go really slow with this, but, and that's on the Amy Grow Me 101 playlist, but this is how I do it. We're then gonna take this and essentially try to make a little fake V by taking our darning needle and going through the center of that stitch. And I like to go through both, 
just like so. Then I like to go through the top notch back here and pull that through. Be gentle with pulling it because whatever tension you pull it is of how tight that stitch is going to look. I'm going to pull this a little bit tighter. That way it's all nice like that. And what I'm going to do here is again, very, very gently. If you pull it too tight, it will just ruin your stitch and it won't look right. I'm going to take this and double knot the two very gently. And then I'm going to do another knot, just a quick little pretzel knot just to make it a little bit more seamless. You take the one that is on top, whatever one that managed to get on top there, and I'm going to then take this and put it and align it where I want it. Generally, it's gonna be right around here. I'm gonna take this and weasel it through to attach it. Pull that right there, and then take this and go a little bit further away. If you just wanna hot glue this on, that's what I'm going to do, but I like to hide these tails this way in order to get the tails out of the way. And then take this one, figure out where it lines up underneath. I'm going to go right there. Go across, pull that tail. Like so. Pull that tail and go back like so, and now you've got these two tails here. And what I like to do here with this is you have this mouth that'll flop. If you wanna sew it on however you want, that's fine. I'm gonna take a little daub of hot glue or fabric glue and put it on the center here and then just press it on. I like how it kind of looks like it's puffing up and I think that's super cute. I find that if I sew it, especially like even just along the back ridges here, it just looks way too flat in order to give the appearance that I want it to have. So I'm gonna go off camera real quick and hot glue this on, but that's pretty much it when it comes to your little octopus. Be right back. All right, so I did a little dollop of hot glue on the underside of this real quick. And now what I'm gonna do is kind of tug on these just making sure that they are nice and snug and aren't gonna like kind of pull from that at all. And now I'm going to snip and tug and snip. That one kind of stuck through a little bit more, so I'm just gonna squish it a little. And that is all she wrote. Pretty much that's all there is to this pattern. It's super cute. I love how all of these turned out. They're all stinking adorable. I made the entire rainbow in them and I think they're just really adorable and I love them. So if you like this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe to all those buttony things down below if you're interested in doing that. We have a Patreon if you're interested in that, patreon.com slash knit where we do different awards like free patterns and stuff like that. Um, thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe again, hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this. Until next time, guys. Bye!